The largest battle cruisers in history represent formidable maritime giants, blending unprecedented firepower with impressive speed and versatility. With massive displacements, formidable armament, and cutting-edge technologies, these behemoths stand as endearing symbols of naval power and innovation on an unparalleled scale. Today, we'll present to you the top 10 biggest battle cruisers in history. In this list, we will not include battle cruisers which have not entered commission, such as Ersatz York class, Borodino class battle cruisers, Mackinson class, and so on. Also, we will not include Lexington class battle cruisers as two of the class were converted to aircraft carriers, while the rest were not completed. At number 10, Indefatigable class. The second class of British battle cruisers utilized by the Royal Navy and the Royal Australian Navy in World War I. Similar to their predecessor, the Invincible class. These battle cruisers adopted the design features of contemporary Royal Navy dreadnoughts but traded off armor protection and one main battery turret to gain a four knot speed advantage. With a total length of 590 feet, 179.8 meters, they had a displacement of 22,490 tons at deep load, exceeding the earlier ships by 1,524 tons. At number 9, Courageous Class. The Courageous class consisted of three battle cruisers constructed for the Royal Navy during World War I. Originally intended to back the Baltic project, a strategic plan by Admiral of the Fleet Lord Fisher for landing troops on the German Baltic coast, these ships were known for their speed but featured minimal armor and a limited number of heavy guns. With an overall length of 786 feet 9 inches, 239.8 meters, and a deep load displacement of 22,922 tons, the Courageous class vessels were designed to meet specific wartime objectives. At number 8, Moltke class. They comprise two all big gun battle cruisers of the German Imperial Navy constructed between 1909 and 1911, both actively serving in World War I. Moltke engaged in various significant battles as part of the High Seas Fleet. Throughout the design phase, multiple weight increases occurred due to expansions in the citadel size, armor thickness, additions to ammunition stores, and the reconfiguration of the boiler system. The Malky class vessels had an overall length of 186.6 meters, 612 feet 2 inches, and a fully loaded displacement of 25,400 tons. At number 7, the Derflinger class. They consisted of three battle cruisers in the Imperial German Navy and was commissioned as part of the 1912-13 naval building program in response to the Royal Navy's introduction of the Lion-class battle cruisers a few years prior. Highly esteemed for their performance at sea, these vessels were ordered to meet the strategic challenges posed by their British counterparts. The Delflinger-class ships were outfitted with a Krupp cemented steel armor conforming to the prevailing standard for German warships during that era. With an impressive overall length of 210.40 meters, 690 feet 3 inches, and a deep load displacement of 31,500 tons, these battle cruisers epitomized the technological and naval prowess of the Imperial German Navy during this period. At number 6, the Lion class. They consisted of two battle cruisers commissioned by the Royal Navy, represented a considerable advancement in speed, armament, and armor compared to their predecessors of the indefatigable class. The enhancements were a direct response to the formidable German cruisers of the Moltke class, which surpassed the British battle cruisers of the Invincible class in size and power. These state of the art vessels boasted an impressive overall length of 700 feet. 213.4 meters, and at deep load, displays 31,310 tons, showcasing the Royal Navy's commitment to technological superiority and strategic readiness in the evolving naval landscape of the time. At number 5, the Congo-class battle cruisers. These were a class of four battle cruisers built for the Imperial Japanese Navy immediately before World War I. They emerged as pivotal assets in the naval theater throughout World War II. 
renowned for their active participation in numerous significant wartime engagements. These battleships epitomize the Japanese Navy's commitment to modernization initiatives and the strategic imperative to rival the capabilities of the British Royal Navy. The inception of the Congo-class design stemmed from the IJN's comprehensive modernization programs, reflecting a proactive stance in response to evolving global naval dynamics. With an expansive overall length measuring 214.58 meters, 704 feet 0 inches, these battle cruisers at deep load boasted a substantial displacement of 32,156 tons, affirming their status as formidable vessels in the maritime landscape of their era. HMS Queen Mary She was the last battle cruiser constructed by the Royal Navy before the onset of the First World War, stood as the exclusive representative of her class, sharing numerous attributes with the Lion-class battle cruisers. Including her complement of eight 13.5-inch guns, Queen Mary was commissioned in 1913 and actively participated in the Battle of Heligoland Bight as a key element of the Grand Fleet in 1914. Diverging from the Lion-class predecessors, Queen Mary exhibited variances in the engagement of her secondary armor and the positioning of officers' quarters. Slightly larger than the preceding Lion-class ships, Queen Mary boasted an overall length of 700 feet 0.6 inches meters, with a deep load displacement of 32,160 tons. At number 3, Renowned Class This class consisted of two battle cruisers commissioned by the Royal Navy during the First World War. It was initially conceived as enhanced iterations of the Revenge-class battleships. With both vessels actively serving throughout the Second World War, their notable contributions include the search for the Admiral Graf Spee in 1939, active participation in the Norwegian campaign from April to June 1940, and involvement in the pursuit of the German battleship Bismarck in 1941. Their renowned class ships, distinguished by their substantial overall length measuring 794 feet 1.5 inches, 242.0 meters and a deep load displacement of 32,740 tons exemplified the Royal Navy's commitment to versatile and enduring naval capabilities across evolving wartime scenarios. At number 2, HMS Tiger. She was a battle cruiser commissioned by the Royal Navy during the 1910s, emerged as the most heavily armored British battle cruiser at the onset of the First World War in 1914. Renowned for her robust defensive capabilities, Tiger retained her status as the oldest battle cruiser within the Royal Navy after the implementation of tonnage limits stipulated by the Washington Naval Treaty in 1922. Playing a pivotal role in the Battle of Jutland in 1916, Tiger showcased her resilience by sustaining only light damage despite enduring numerous hits from German shells. Measuring an expansive overall length of 704 feet, 214.6 meters, and boasting a typical displacement of 33,790 tons at deep load, HMS Tiger stood as a testament to the Royal Navy's commitment to maritime strength and longevity in the face of evolving naval treaties and wartime challenges. At number one, the Admiral class battle cruisers. These were initially planned as a set of four British Royal Navy vessels to be constructed towards the conclusion of World War I. Originally conceived as an improved version of the Queen Elizabeth-class battleships, the design transitioned into a battlecruiser format at the suggestion of Admiral John Jellicoe, the Grand Fleet's commander. Recognizing the need to counter superior German battlecruisers, the design was revised accordingly. The intended class included HMS Hood, Anson, Howie, and Rodney named after notable admirals, but construction on the latter three was halted. Only HMS Hood was completed, boasting an expansive overall length of 860 feet 7 inches, 262.3 meters, and a deep load displacement of 47,430 tons. Well, that's it guys for today. We hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you did, don't forget to stay tuned for more exciting and interesting videos from the buzz. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.